In this revision session, we're going to look at component four, producing and analyzing question six, which is section B, the one and only question for section B. Now, if you've missed the other five or six lessons that have come before this or sessions that have come before this, you should definitely check these out. We've been covering each of the questions. We've been breaking them down. We've been looking at how to prepare for this exam. We've also done a same series for component three, listening and analyzing. So if you really want to get your head around these exams and make sure you are completely and utterly prepared, definitely check them out. Once again, if you like this content, if you want to see more, like, like it, um, subscribe to the channel and we're going to try and produce as much of this content as possible and look deeper into all of these components. So question six, here we go. So once again, this is part of section B. It's the only question for section B and it's worth 20 marks. It's an extended response question um, which focuses on a specific recording or mixing scenario and looking at signal paths or effects or music, music technology hardware. It's worth 20 marks. Those particular 20 marks can be broken down into two um, assessment objectives. So assessment objective 3 or AO3 and assessment objective 4 or AO4. So um, AO3 is to demonstrate and apply knowledge and understanding of music technology. You can only gain a maximum of five marks for this one and it's really about just saying oh that's happening. Um, there's no deeper response to it, it's just you, you know that it's happening, you've said it and that's it. So Responses could include things like looking at compression or EQ or filtering or balance and panning and things like that, but you don't go any deeper. Um, and if you can identify five things, you can get those five marks. If you want to take those marks deeper and you want to elaborate on what you've seen, that's where AO4 comes in. So using analytical and appraising skills to make evaluative and critical judgments about the use of music technology and for this there are 15 marks so you really are looking at between four and five different things maybe even a few more based on the scenario that you've been given so the scenarios that we've been given then in this particular um, exam so this is the only exam we can reference on at this particular moment and which is the example you can find the sample on the edXL website and it's freely available for you to download practice and have a go at so once again question six so it says here figure one shows a mix of a drum kit in a in a record in a rock recording the final mix will also include bass guitar distortion electric guitar and vocals. So you're only focusing on what you can see and making those judgments. So it says here, evaluate the suitability of the routing and plugging settings um, for a rock recording. So just focus in on what you can see, look at the benefits, look at the drawbacks. Um, deliberately, there will be a few drawbacks or, or things that could be improved and deliberately there will be things that work really well. You need to focus in on what the actual question is saying to you as well. So it wants you to evaluate the suitability of routing and the plug-in settings. So the routing is how the channel strip works and, and going from there and everything that's been applied to that channel strip and how it's moved forward all the way from input to mastering. So just keep that in mind that that's the focus. Um, that does encompass quite a few things, which is really handy. So for AO3, um, you could identify things like microphone information, EQ, filtering, balance, dynamic processing and effects. And then for AO4, you could take that a bit further. So let's look at, say for instance, you identify some compression. Um, in the example above, and this comes straight from the, the mark scheme. So in the example that I'm going to show you in the next screen, they've used compression on the overheads. Um, so if you've identified the compression, you could go on to say something like, the compression would add um, add sustain. Ah, the compression would add sustain to the cymbals. The low ratio would help reduce pumping. A small amount of compression would not overemphasize the room ambience, preserving the kit sounding um, too distant. The compress the compression. Ah, the compressors are are not stereo linked, so there could be image shifting, especially if the floor tom is floor tom is here so this is quite nice that's a big response so you're going to be looking at a few extra marks that which is good and this is what they are looking for they're looking for you to be able to explain what 
what you've heard or what you've seen and, and how that can identify. So you will be pulling information from everything that you've done in component one for this, especially if it's a recording kind of setup and the things that you've kind of appreciated when you're doing your own mixing and doing your own recording from that particular session. So if we move over to the next screen, so once again this is worth 20 marks, uh, we move over to the next screen, this is the appendix that the sample gave us and once again you can see along the left hand side you've got your EQ settings and and you can see all of the different EQs. So you could identify something from that. At the bottom, it tells you what track they're on as well. Then you've got compression, you've got reverb, you've got your aux, you've got your panning, you've got your output, and then you've got your faders. And remember, you are looking at benefits and drawbacks. So you could identify something that you really like, or you could identify something that you can improve. So the first thing you would look at, because it's a routing task, you would look at the fact that the, the drums are all routed their output channel is all routed into a subgroup and that subgroup has got an aux applied to it which is reverb um, and then it goes to the output. So you could identify that the fact is that they've routed all of these channels into a subgroup to apply um, the reverb to it. There is some compression on that channel but that's flat as is the EQ. Um, in the reverb channel it's just literally looking at some kind of specific reverb that's been applied. So you could definitely talk about the way it's been routed. You could definitely talk about the fact that all the levels are identical. Um, and maybe that that would need to be um, emphasized maybe if you wanted a different kind of mix. You could also look at the panning, the fact that the overheads are hard left and hard right and why that might have been done. Um, you could also talk about why the other three instances are dead center and if there's any drawbacks or benefits from doing that slightly differently. You can look at the EQ and suggest why that's been done or what could improve that. So why certain frequencies have been cut out. Um, so there's lots of things to talk about there. If you, When you're approaching this particular question, what I say to my students, and it's, it's completely up to them really, but what I say to my students is I come to this question first look at it, spend just a couple of minutes reading through it, um, looking at the appendix, and then jotting some bullet points. If you jot some bullet points right at the beginning, and you look at this question right at the beginning, when you come to it again later on, it won't be such a shock. Okay, so grab yourself some rough paper, make some bullet points, so that you're ready to write your extended response or your essay. Um, and this can really help in your planning because it will be about the planning and making sure that you can get the full 20 marks and understanding, okay, so if you make one point, you're probably going to get two marks unless you can extend that point, which you could probably get between two, three or four marks, okay? Um, so you are looking at at least five points, maybe six points, just to make sure you guarantee it. So you identify something for your AO3 and then you elaborate it for your AO4. So... That's a really good technique and things that you can do for preparing for this particular question then. So things that I tell my students to do is practice by listening to music and identifying identifying the areas that could be improved or changed or that work because of a certain reason. You could also listen and identify the techniques and elements that make up a mix and describe what you're hearing. And then you could try to explain your thoughts by using the areas of music production and the sonic qualities of a recording. During these three tasks, so it's all about the listening, during these three tasks, um, I would pair up with somebody, I would listen to them explaining what they're hearing from a track, and then you try and do the same. Try and focus in on the main areas first. So when I say the sonic qualities, you really are looking at what's happening with frequency on a track, or the whole track, what's happening with the balance um, in levels, what's happening with the effects and reverb and the actual atmosphere and what's happening with um, things like compression, EQ or gating or any kind of creative things. Um, once you've identified the more common aspects then it becomes slightly easier. So I hope you found this useful. Um, you will need to kind of do a lot of listening and you will need to identify all of these things so that you can talk about them. But Ultimately, every mix is made up of these things, so volume, panning, frequency, and depth of field, or, or reverb. So if you started with them, it will give you a good grasp of what, what's to come and how to kind of um, plan out.
So, I hope you found this useful. If you like this content, you want to see more, give us a thumbs up, um, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next video.